Have you ever had a friend that you have been friends with for years and then you guys were able to reconnect and live within hours of each other? That's what happened to me with my friend and I am going to be painting this piece of furniture for her and her family. They are another military family. So if you guys wanna see me use some greens and I also am gonna tell you why I'm using these colors. Besides the fact that she likes those colors, there is another reason, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, if you are new here, my name is Kristana. So welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a furniture artist and I do furniture tutorials, tutorials every week. If you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button right here. Hit the bell. Okay, the subscribe button's not right here. It's down at the bottom, but hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out every week. I usually do a video every Tuesday and Thursday, and I am just so grateful for everybody here. I am super close to hitting 50,000 subscribers, which may not seem like a lot to some people, but I am really just excited and proud of this channel. I am so happy that I can help inspire people and you guys inspire me and you guys give me great ideas. And I take some of the things that you guys actually teach me and I turn them into videos and things like that. And I just, I thank you everybody. Just thank you so much. I am super just grateful for every single one of you. So this week, the video that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be painting this piece I did get this from Luxembourg from a thrift store. And I have a really good friend, her name is Amanda, and her husband and my husband have worked together since they were like super young. I mean, I've known Amanda for 10 plus years. And our husbands were stationed together at the first base, and then they were, then we moved and then they came to Italy and they were stationed in Italy with us and then we all separated and moved and they went back to a different base, we went to a different base and now they are in the Netherlands only a few hours away from us and so she, one, has been watching my journey and she really wants a piece of furniture from me and I wanna do that for her. So her favorite colors are blues and greens and I asked you guys about color and what you guys wanted me to do. And so I've scheduled it here because a lot of you guys asked for green as well in the community tab. And so I am going to be doing green. And also, if you guys didn't know, I am a living kidney donor. And so green is the kidney donor awareness color. I slacked a little bit this year. Usually in April, I do a green painted furniture piece to commemorate the, you know, kidney disease awareness, donor, living donor month, kidney donor or organ donor month. And I didn't this year. So you know what? We're just gonna make this video all about, you know, treasuring a friendship I've had for a decade and treasuring being able to help another friend by donating kidney and treasuring you guys at almost 50,000. And a lot of you guys said green. So we're gonna do some greens and some blues on this piece. We're gonna do some blending. I really don't have too much of a plan yet, but you know, you guys know how it is. We're gonna go on this journey and I cannot wait for you guys to be on it with me. So let's get started. Sorry, I rambled a little bit. I know someone's gonna yell at me, but whatever. So let's get started. I cannot wait for this piece. It's gonna be awesome. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the handles and I'm gonna remove the metal keyhole cover that is on the door. So this metal keyhole cover broke away, cover broke apart in like three pieces. I think what they did is they glued it. There's some glue on there. I'm gonna have to scrape that off later. And they just kind of thought that it would stay on there forever, but I do not throw anything away. And because I don't throw anything away, I am able to replace this with something that came from an older piece, but it fits perfectly. So here is a new cover, a new old cover. And this came off of a piece before, but this is why I reuse stuff and I keep everything because you never know. Next, I'm going to clean the piece. I'm gonna use Dixie Bell's White Lightning. It is a TS TSP based cleaner. So people ask me, why don't I put it in a squirt bottle versus putting it in the thing of water? Okay, so here's my theory that it's like cleaning your floor with a Swiffer Sweeper or cleaning your floor with a mop and a bucket of water. 
I understand that maybe it saves a little bit putting it in a squirt bottle, but it's just the way I like to do it. And that's one thing you have to remember when you watch different people is everyone has their own way of doing something. There's no right or wrong way to do it. So you figure out what works best for you or what you think is the best and you go with that. I didn't know what I was gonna do with the top, so I cleaned the top really well. When I clean the top, it allows me to see if there's any damage, it allows me to see what the color is, so that way I can better assess what I'm gonna do. And you can see how dirty this top was. So I'm using a 3M scrubby because I knew this piece was really, really dirty. For pieces that aren't super dirty, I'll usually use a microfiber cloth, but this allowed me to scrub the piece. And now I'm going over it with clean water and a clean microfiber cloth so that I can get all the residual off. And I decided to strip this down. I started sanding it a little bit and I realized that the finish on it is a little bit thicker and I just, it's easier for me. And when it's warm outside, I just strip things versus sanding them because it's gonna take me forever to sand it off. So I am using a chemical stripper right here. I put a thick layer on it and I allow it to sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then I come back with my plastic scraper that has a little scoop on it. It's my favorite thing to use. And I'm gonna scrape this finish off. I repeat this process twice, but I'm gonna take that little 3M scrubby that I had that I used to clean the piece and I'm going to go around the edge of it. You can do that or sometimes I use steel wool. I'm out of steel wool, so I used that. But this will allow me to get into all those little cracks and crevices as well with the, the stripper so that way I can get the finish off. After I'm done using a chemical stripper, I always neutralize it with mineral spirits. What this is gonna do is it's gonna stop the stripper from continuing to per se cook is kind of one of the words that we use. I use a 3M scrubber and I'm gonna just scrub across it. This helps me get all the residual stripper off, any kind of debris off, and it evaporates super fast. So literally within five minutes, it's gonna be evaporated, probably even less than that. And if you have any little of those the debris left over, you can just take a paper towel or a clean scrubby, dry scrubby, and just rub it off the surface. It's not gonna stick on there. So that's what I do. And it also helps open the wood grain if you decide that you wanna stain, but I am keeping this natural. So I am using my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray. I'm gonna start with a 120 grit, and I'm gonna go over the entire piece, and then I'm going to go up to a 220 grit because I want it to be a really nice smooth surface, but I really want to lighten this as much as I possibly can. I decided to go with the base color of being a really light green called sea glass. And so I'm using the gray Dixie Belle Boss. What this is, this is a blocking primer. And that way, if I have any tannins or bleed through, I will be able to paint that light color over it and you will not see any bleed through. So this is gonna help with that. It's gonna make sure that I don't get any kind of tannins or bleed through when I start going over it with the other colored paints. I suggest this for any light colors that you guys are going to use. I'm gonna do a coat of sea glass over this entire piece. I chose a lighter green color because I decided I'm going to do some blending, but I always like to have a base coat of a lighter color first, just because it allows me to visualize better. And I like to have a base coat of one of the colors, like a green. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blend greens. And so I want a lighter green as my base coat as well. So that way, when I do start blending, it's not going to go down to the gray surface or down to the wood surface. So when I blend, that's the first thing I do is I always lay down a base coat of a solid color. 
I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am super digging this sea glass. I am going to be using this again. It is like a fresh color. So I'm going to blend. If you see the door on the left, I played around with it first to figure out what I wanted to do before I could teach you guys how to do it. And so I'm taking Dixie Belle's Palmetto, which is a just a rich green color. And I'm outlining. So this is the kind of blending that I'm going to be showing you today is it's only going to be three different colors. You're going to need a brush for each color and you're going to need a clean, dry, neutral brush for when you do your final blending. You need a mister bottle as well. But what I'm doing right here is I'm outlining everything. Thing. So I want it to be darker on the outside. So anywhere that I want it to be darker is where I'm going to put my darker color. And I'm going to butt my medium color, which is going to be mint julep, against that darker color. And then anywhere I want some really light areas, I'm going to go over it with sea glass. So for this door, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline and shade. Let's talk about what the difference is. So we're going to shade is, is the darker colors and highlighting is the lighter colors. So I am going to create a shaded effect on the outside of the door trim. So that way we have more dimension. And that's what I'm just doing here. I'm putting the mint julep next to the palmetto. I'm I'm going to spritz it with water. You want to make sure that it's not super wet, but you want to make sure it's wet enough that the paint can move together. This is my clean dry neutral brush. I'm going to go vertical, horizontal, in circles, diagonal, and you're going to want to use a light hand. You need to remember to always use a light hand when you're blending. It goes a lot further if you use a lighter hand. You don't need a lot of pressure to to make these colors blend together, especially if you're using the paint that I use. So I'm gonna do the inside panel, I'm gonna mist this, and then I'm going to outline the outside with the palmetto. After I've outlined everything with the palmetto, I'm going to take the clean dry neutral brush and I'm going to start blending that. I'm not blending it into any other kind of paint. What I'm doing is I'm just creating more of a shading effect. So I'm taking that clean dry neutral brush and I'm using the moisture from the paint and I'm going in circles, vertical, horizontal, and then I'm going to move on to the next step. So I'm going to put some water on there with my mister bottle and I'm going to go over that area that we just did palmetto and did the little blending with, I'm gonna use the mint julep and I'm gonna go over that. So we, we go from dark to medium to light, okay? So when you're shading, you wanna do the darker color, then the medium color, then the lighter color. And that's what I'm doing right now. And you wanna keep your surface misted just so that everything starts moving together. So here I am right here, taking those two colors now and I'm kind of pushing them together. And then that middle panel, I wanted to do kind of a gradient look to it. So the top part, I'm gonna put some palmetto and then I'm, I'm gonna decide where I want it. So, you know, however far down you want that palmetto, that's where you're gonna put it. So that's the darker color. And then I'm gonna put the middle color, which is mint julep on there. And then I'm gonna put the lightest color, which is sea glass on there. And this is gonna give me a gradient look. So I'm gonna add all my paint, I'm going to mist it, and then you're gonna see me blend it with my clean dry neutral brush again, going vertical, horizontal, in circles, diagonal, keeping it, having moisture on there, not too much moisture, but just enough that these can start blending together. Next, I'm gonna show you how I blended the drawers. So I'm gonna mist it with my mister bottle. And again, we're going to, remember I said dark to medium to light. We are going to start from the outside and work our way in. I am going to outline it with the darkest color, which is palmetto. So if you guys are using different colors, just remember the darkest color goes on the outside and you can go in as far as you want. However, how, however much shading you want. So I, you could go in further if you want, you could have just done the edges if you want. I wanted it to be about an inch in. So I went over it with the palmetto. Now I'm going to go over that center part and overlap a little bit with the mint julep, which is my medium color. And then I'm gonna add my sea glass, which is my lightest color in the very center. 
So that way I have a highlighted effect when I do this. And so you can see where I put the sea glass in there and I'm kind of blending it a little bit when I put that paint on there. But now what I'm gonna do is miss the whole thing. I'm gonna take my clean dry neutral brush and I'm gonna go horizontal, I'm gonna go vertical, I'm gonna go in circles, I'm gonna go diagonal and this will blend it all together. It really is a very easy blend as long as you are using colors that are very similar. I get people make this mistake all the time where they try they're trying to blend black and white together or colors that do not go together and it's just you really especially if you're a beginner you need to start with colors that are very similar so I always get this question of why do you paint with the drawers in well I don't always but when I'm blending I do because I like to visualize where it's going to be so I'm going to show you what I do after I'm done with the drawers I go back and I fix the frame you could do this before or you could do this after you do your blending for your drawers it really doesn't matter so all my drawers are out I am going to again where I want my shading I'm going to put the palmetto I'm going to butt up the medium color next to the palmetto when I'm done placing the palmetto. I'm going to put a little bit of the lighter color and I'm going to blend it the same way that I have been doing everything else. And that way everything becomes cohesive. So after I'm done doing this, you're going to see me put the drawers back in and everything is starting to come together. It's not a hard technique. It's just, it takes patience. If you want to blend and you want to blend nicely and you want it to look professional, then it's going to it's going to be a few steps. This isn't just painting a piece of color or piece of furniture one color, which is there's nothing wrong with. This is an artistic finish and so it does take a little bit of time and it takes some patience, but it's a really easy technique once you really understand that you need colors that are very similar or colors that when they blend, they make a beautiful color and they don't muddy and make a gross color. I'm gonna use my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray to distress this. I'm using a five millimeter pad, a fine grit five, five millimeter pad. I always distress anybody who's in the military's pieces because we move so much that if you made something perfect, it is bound to get destroyed or nicked, even a little nick. And so I always do even just a light, tasteful distressing on it. And so next, what I'm gonna do, now that it's blended and distressed, I'm going to use the Magnolia Garden Transfer. I don't often use transfers on my pieces, but this transfer is very 
classy and we're going for an elegant blended look and i just think that this is going to really bring everything together before you use a transfer you want to make sure that your paint is thoroughly dried you do not want to try to apply transfers over wax you can apply them over a polycrylic but they do not do well over wax so i this transfer you can cut in different places it's not like one sheet so you can cut it and place it however you want and build it and so i put the plastic down i always burnish it really well with the stick first and then i go through and start burnishing it a little bit at a time and pulling it back very lightly a little bit at a time and then the transfer goes onto the piece once my transfer is on the surface, I will burnish it again with my hand and then I'll take a microfiber cloth and go over it again. Transfers always need to be sealed and I recommend you use a satin clear coat to seal them. You don't want to use gator hide to seal them, which is what I'm going to use later on the top. So I use two different sealers on this piece just because I don't want to use the gator hide with my transfer. Now I'm going to add some dark wax. I decided I wanted to add some dark wax. So sometimes when I get into a project, I decide later. So I put easy peasy spray wax on it first, rub it in, let it sit for about an hour and dry. And that creates a surface that makes it easier for me to pull the darker wax off. So I am taking the black best dang wax by Dixie Belle, which is a water-based wax. And I am going around the outside just to kind of darken it a little bit. And I'm going into those cracks and crevices to add a little bit of character. After I'm done putting it on here and I'm applying it with the La Petite brush, I am going to wipe it back with a microfiber cloth. And then if it's too dark in certain areas, you can actually spray it with the Easy Peasy Spray Wax or take a clear wax and you can erase that colored wax so that way it's not so dark. Because I need to already seal this piece because there's a transfer on there, I'm going to seal the entire thing with the clear coat satin. And this just kind of locks in the colored wax. So Dixie Bell has created a water-based wax and a water-based top coat that can be interchanged together. So normally if it's an oil-based wax, you do not want to put a top coat over it. But that's what I'm going to do is I'm sealing the bottom the body of the piece and the transfer with the satin clear coat. In order to really bring this elegant makeover together, I wanted to change the color of the hardware. So I'm using the Gold Gilding Wax by Dixie Bell, which is an oil-based wax. This will dry within about 24 hours, and then it will cure within 21 to 30 days, but it will not come off. So once it's fully cured, it is not going to rub off. It's gonna be permanent. And it's just a really good solution to changing your hardware color if you want. And so I clean these really well, and then I I change the color of the hardware. The very last step of this makeover is to seal the top. So I like to wrap my little paint tray in tin foil so I can reuse it. I'm using a high density foam roller and I'm using Dixie Belle's Gator Hide. It is a water resistant top coat so that if something 
spills on this, it will be fine. But I get a lot of questions of, can I seal raw wood? Absolutely, and I would. So that is why I'm sealing this because if I just leave it as raw wood, it's not protected. So that's what I'm doing is sealing this raw wood. I got a request in one of my last videos to show you guys a dusting brush and a tack cloth, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna show you what I do to apply a second coat of here, what I do in between coats and some of the tools that I use. So right now I'm using a high density foam roller and I'm going over the raw wood. It's normal for a white high density foam roller to get kind of a brown on there. It's probably pulling up just some of the maybe dust that got stuck into the wood grain. So what I'm doing here is I am taking my high density foam roller, I'm not using a ton of pressure and I'm just overlapping just slightly and I'm going in one direction and I'm going to just leave it. This is gonna be my first coat and I'm gonna allow it to dry for a few hours in between and then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do before I apply my second coat. After your top coat is fully dry, you want to do a light scuff sand. So I'm using a very fine rad pad, which is the equivalent to a 280 to 380 grit. So a higher grit, and you're going to just go over the surface lightly. You don't want to go so hard that you're taking the finish off. You just want to knock down any kind of maybe fuzzies that come. And then this also will allow that second layer to that second coat to really grip onto that first coat. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what a dusting brush is. It's got soft bristles and you're gonna wanna use this to get any dust off in between sanding. Let's say that you distress your piece or you're sanding your piece. This is a really great tool to get any kind of dust off there before you put a top coat on. And then you're gonna want a tack cloth. So tack cloths, I only use these for when I'm doing in between top coats, or you can use them in between coats of your stain. So this is a sticky cloth, and what you do is just rub it across the surface, and that's gonna get any kind of dust or fuzzies or anything off of there, any kind of debris off of there, before you go in with your second coat or your next coat of clear coat or your next coat of stain. So this is a great tool to have in your shop because it's going to help you get a perfect finish. So now I'm gonna go over this with my second coat and I'm gonna do the same exact thing that I did with my first coat. For this pass, I had a little too much sealer on there, and so you can see how it's dripping. This is why it is super important for you to make sure you're going over the pieces to get that extra, you're going over the sides to get that extra sealer off. And I always do this to make sure that I don't have dripping of my paint or dripping of my clear coat. I always, before anything is dry, I go back and I inspect my piece for anywhere that there's drips or any kind of bubbling or any kind of pooling or anything like that. So get in the habit of looking over your work after you've applied your paint, after you've applied your clear coat on the body, on the top, so that you can catch imperfections like that. Okay, everybody, so this video is done. I hope you enjoyed that. Here is the piece. Remember, I'm going to have some nice staged pictures here right after this. Everything I use will be in the description below, so it'll take you right to where you need to be to recreate this look. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you are hitting that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you get all my videos. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome week. Have a great weekend and happy creating. Bye, guys. What's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five In the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See
see the beautiful world around, want to see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty. Thank you.